Hello everyone, it's me again, Jay. Welcome to my channel. And in this uh, lesson, we will try to discuss or we will try to continue um, the discussion on influence line for BIM. So in other words, this is the second part on the discussion of influence line. So if you missed to watch the first part, I have posted the link in the description below. So I would suggest to please watch the first part because this video here is the continuation of the unfinished solution of our first example. Now for our uh, question letter B, we are asked to draw the influence line for um, the support at C or the shear just to the right of support C. So if we try to cut at this point or at point C, we would have a two shear and that is shear to the um, just to the left of the support C and shear just to the right of the support C. So in this case, we are asked to draw the shear just to the right of the support C. In our uh, previous computation, we already computed the value of E um, with our one unit load moving from um, point A to point E. So we know that when our unit load is at point A or at x equal to zero, we have computed here EY is equal to zero. But since we are um, computing for the shear just to the right of C, we need to cut our beam at point C. So if we cut at that point, we would have this one. So this is our shear to the right of C. And this is our EY. And this is our um, internal hinge D. But since EY is equal to zero, automatically our SCR is equal to zero. So that means our SCR or the shear just to the right of C is also equal to zero. Now in X equal to four, we already computed the value of EY and that is equal to zero. But since again, we are um, computing here for the value of the shear just to the right of C, so we need to cut at that point. So this is our SCR. EY is still equal to zero. But take note, we have a one unit load which is acting at point C. So we have one unit load here. So that means if we sum up forces vertical, it's equal to zero, upwards are positive. That means we have SCR plus EY is equal to 1. However, EY is equal to 0, so therefore, the shear just to the right of C is equal to 1. So therefore, when X equal to 4, SCR here, or, sh or shear um, just to the right of C is equal to 1. Now, when X is equal to 8, we already know that um, when X equal to 8, our EY is equal to zero as well. Tama? So that means if we cut at C, we have this SCR and we have our one unit load at point D. So this is our one and our EY here is equal to zero. So that means if we sum up forces vertical is equal to zero, um, upwards are positive, that means we have EY minus 1 uh, plus SCR is equal to 0, but EY is 0. So we have the value of our shear just to the right of C equal to 1. So therefore, when X is equal to 8, SCR is equal to 1. And lastly, when our X is equal to 12, we know that our EY here is equal to 1. We have already computed that one. So that means um, if we cut at C, so we have SCR, we have one unit load acting at point D, and we have EY here, which is equal to 1. So if we sum up forces vertical is equal to 0, upwards are positive. That means we have SCR plus EY minus 1 is equal to 0, but SCR here, um, but we know that EY is 1, so we 
subtract 1 minus 1. So this would give us SCR equal to 0. So that means when x is equal to 12, SCR is equal to 0. So let's tabulate when x is equal to 0, we have our SCR here which is equal to 0. So we have um, at, at x equal to 0, we have SCR here 0. But when x is equal to 4, SCR is equal to 1. And when x equal to 8, the value of SCR is equal to 1. So we have um, 1 here. But when x is equal to 12, SCR is equal to 0. So this would be the influence line of shear just to the right of C. But as what you can see here, we do not have a line when our x is equal to 0 to 4. Why is it? Because our um, shear just to the right of C will not be affected by the force, by the live load within this range. Like for example, if you let x here is equal to 2, Okay, so you compute for EY, EY here would still be equal to 0 because you will be cutting at, uh, at D. And if you cut at D, we know that when we sum up, if you sum up moment at D is equal to 0, you would come up EY here is equal to 0, correct? And, and if you cut just to the right of C, you would have this. So we know that EY is equal to 0, so that would give us SCR is 0 as well. So even if X is equal to 3, SCR would still be equal to 0. Okay? So when our X is equal to 4, and the location is at C, so therefore SCR here would give us um, 1 Newton or 1 unit load. So we can say then that when our x is greater or equal to 0 or um, less than 4, that would give us SCR coordinate equals to 0. So therefore, our shear just to the right of C will not be affected by the load if our load is within this range. So this would give us the influence line of the shear just to the right of C. Now, what if we apply the, the muller breslaus principle? Since we are asked to compute only the influence diagram for SCR, so we just need to cut just to the right of C, then we would have this influence or this um, new beam. So this is our SCR, this is our D, and this is our EY. Okay, now again, in order to apply the muller breslaus principle, we need to omit um, the support at C. Then we apply load upward that would lead us to a vertical displacement of point C. So our point C would move vertical with a unit of one unit deflection. Okay, then the behavior of our beam as we apply a load so the deflection of our um, beam to the right side of our C would be this one now take note D is internal hinge okay so that means we have a change in curvature at that point so as what you can see, this is similar to the influence diagram using the static method. So therefore, this one is our influence diagram as well. We have one unit coordinate at point C and point D and zero coordinate at point A. Okay, so that's how you apply the muller breslaus principle in computing for the shear just to the right of C. Now, lastly, we have this uh, problem. We are asked to draw the influence line uh, of the bending moment at point B of the beam. So, 
Um, again, influence line can be applied not only for shear, but for bending moment and for deflection as well. But take note, for muller Breslau's principle, we cannot use this method in... Um, in drawing the influence line for deflection. So muller breslaus principle can only be used for the influence line for shear, reaction, and bending moment. So we begin at x is equal to 0. So we put our one unit load here at point A. Then we compute the bending moment at B. But we have already computed the value of Ay if we have our one unit load placed at point A in which we know that Ay is equal to 1. Okay, so that means um, if we cut at point B, so we have this bending moment shown. So we have MB and we have reactions Ay is equal to 1 and a one unit load here. So by summing up moment at B is equal to 0, counterclockwise positive. So we have MB plus 1 unit load times 2. That is the distance from B to A. Then minus um, AY times 2 is equal to 0. But AY here is 1, correct? So that means we have MB plus 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. So we can say then that MB here is equal to 0. So therefore, when X is equal to 0, MB is equal to 0. And if we place our one unit load at 2 meters from A, so we have to place our one unit load at B, let's say at that point. Now, we would have the value of AY, but... Um, we do not know yet what will be the value of Ay because we did not consider from our previous solution um, when our load is at x equal to 2. So we have to compute Ay. So at that point, now we cut at point D. So at if we cut at point D, we would directly solve the value of Ey here equals to 0. Again, since we do not have external loads, on the right side of D. And if we sum up moment at C, okay, is equal to zero, then counterclockwise positive. So we have, if we assume that AY is upward, then that means we have um, negative AY times four, that is the distance from C, plus the one unit load times two, that's the distance from C, then plus EY times 8 is equal to 0. But we know EY here is 0. So that means AY is equal to 2 over 4 or 1 half. But since our goal here is to compute for MB, so we cut at B. So we have these forces. We have the AY and its reaction 1 half. And we have the moment B as well as the shear and the horizontal force. So that means we have here summation of moment at B is equal to zero, counterclockwise positive. Therefore, we have um, negative AY times 2, that is the distance from A to C. Then plus MB is equal to 0, so therefore we have the value of MB is equal to, now we have AY 1 half times 2. So we have MB is equal to 1. So therefore, when our X is equal to 2, MB is equal to 1. Okay? Now when our unit load is at 4 meters from A or at point C, okay, when our um, U1 unit load here is at this point, we know that the value of the reaction at A is equal to 0. So we have AY is equal to 0. So if we cut at B, so we have this AY here 0, then moment here B would also equal to 0 as well. 
And we can say that with our x equal to 4, mb is equal to 0. But when our x is equal to 8, so we have our one unit load at the internal hinge. So we have one unit load here. So still our um, reaction at A here would be equal to 0. Correct? And we know that when x equal to 8, the value of the reaction here is equal to negative 1. Uh, we have already computed this one. So that means if we have a opposite uh, direction of our reaction, our reaction here is basically going downward, and that we would have a positive value. Okay, So if we cut at point B, since we are um, our aim here is to compute for the moment at B, so we have MB here, that means we have um, summation of moment B is equal to 0, counterclockwise positive, so that means we have um, MB plus 1 times 2 is equal to 0, so we have MB is equal to negative 2. So therefore, when x is equal to 8, the moment at B is equal to negative 2. And lastly, when our um, one unit load is at 12 meters away from A, so we have um, our one unit load at point E, so the reaction at AY from our previous solution is equal to 0. Okay, so that means automatically our moment at B is also equal to 0. So when our x is equal to 12, the moment at B is equal to 0. So we now uh, draw the influence line using the data that we have just solved. Now again, when our x is equal to 0, the moment at B is equal to 0, correct? So therefore, um, we have a 0 coordinate at this point. So we have and when our x is equal to 2, we have computed that mb is equal to 1. So we have mb here has a, co a coordinate of 1 when our x is equal to 2. Okay? Then next is we have when x equal to 4, mb is equal to 0. So at this point. And when x is equal to 8, mb is equal to negative 2. Okay, so therefore we go down okay, from our reference line. So we have negative 2 here. And lastly, when we have our x equal to 0, mb is equal to 0. So this is the influence line for the moment at B. Now, as what you can see, um, when our load is at x is equal to 2, this would give us a positive moment at B, or positive bending. And if our load is at um, x is equal to 8, or at point D, that means our uh, moment at B would give us a negative bending, or that is frowning curvature and the maximum moment at B occurs when our live load is at x is equal to 12 or when our live load is at point D or at the internal hinge. Okay, now what if we try to use the uh, Mueller Breslau's principle in computing or in, um, in drawing the influence line? And we have to draw the influence line at of moment at B by using the muller breslaus principle. Now for moment, we just need to draw a rotation. So at B, we draw a rotation which is to the left of B, we have a counterclockwise. And to the um, right side of B, we have clockwise moment. If you let our beam rotate due to this um, rotation or due to this moment we would have uh, this exaggerated deflection of beam so this would happen if we um, let our point B bend due to the 
rotation or due to the um, external moment. And the movement of B here is equal to the one unit load apply, which is one. And since this is the um, generated behavior of our beam once we let point B here to bend, and that means this is our influence line. Okay? So, so by copying the deflection of our beam, so that would also be the influence line. But we know we have a one unit coordinate at point B, so we, so we can also compute the coordinates of other point. So by using ratio and proportion, we have to compute, let's say this our Y. So we can say that 1 is to 2 since this is 2 meters. And we have Y is 2. Now again, this is 4 meters length. So we have 4. That means Y is equal to 2. So therefore, we have coordinate at point D here equals to 2. So at point E, we still have a 0 here since we have a support. So there would be no movement of point E. And the same as with point A and point C. So we have a 0 coordinates respectively. Okay, so this would be the influence line by using the muller breslaus principle. And this is to expedite the process in creating an influence line. So again, muller breslaus can you only be used for the shear, reaction, and moment influence line. But it can't be applied to deflection influence line. And that ends the discussion on how to draw the influence line. And in my next video, we will try to solve problems. We will try to apply influence line on determining moments, on determining shear forces. In other words, we will be applying influence line into real um, situation or into load application okay so guys thank you for listening but please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell thank you guys and god bless